My name is Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for GRE or GMAT. If you're preparing for either of those tests, on my channel you will find the solution to all the math problems that you find in, in the second edition of the revised GRE and all the math problems in the first edition of the revised GRE. The first edition problems appear from day number 1 through 200 and beginning with, page, uh, beginning with day number 201 you will find solutions to all the math problems from revised GRE second edition. Similarly, if you're preparing for the GMAT, you will find on my channel solutions to all the math problems from the 13th edition of the official guide of the GMAT review. This book contains 230 problem solving questions. It has 174 data sufficiency questions. As I said, we have already solved every single math problem from this book and you will find the solutions to these problems from day number 1 through 250. Right now, we will discuss the notion of what is known as prime factors, a concept that appears in both of the exam on a regular basis, what is known as prime factors. This is part two of two. If you have not watched the first part, part one, make sure you watch part one where we solve some problems. Make sure you solve those problems first before we tackle this problem. This is, this is a problem. This is a typical problem that you will appear that, that, you, that you will see dealing with the notion of prime numbers that can appear in either GRE or GMAT. Here's what the problem says. It says a container, a container is filled with red, white, blue or green marbles. So we have four different colors of marbles. One more time, a container is filled with red, white, blue or green marbles. Each is worth, we are told, excuse me, excuse me, each is worth, we are told, Each is worth 2, 3, 5, and 7 points respectively. Red is worth 2, white is worth 3, blue is worth 5, and green is worth 7. A number of marbles are removed from the container. We're going to we put our hand in the, in, in, in the container and we remove a number of marbles at random. What happens next? And then we record their point values. For example, for example, if you happen to if you happen to record or remove one red marble and one, one white marbles and one blue marbles and one green marble just, just, just by fluke. I close my eyes and I put my hand in there and I remove four marbles. And it is quite possible that in that bag, which we are not told how many of each colors are there, it is quite possible that I remove four marbles and I happen to pick one of each color. So I'm going to record their point value. R is two points, white is three points, blue is five points, green is 7 points. So I record their point value. That's what it says here. A number of marbles are removed from the container at random and their point values recorded. We did that. We recorded their point values. If the product of all the point values of the marbles that we removed, if the product of all the point values of the removed marbles happen to equal 63,000, the question is how many of each color were removed? How many of each color were removed? For example, instead of 63,000, if we were told that the product of all the point values of the removed marbles equals 2 times 3 times 5 times 7, 2 times 5 is 10, and 3 times 7 is 21. So in this case, the point value would not be 63,000, it will be 210. If the point value happened to be 210, then we will know that we must have removed one of each color. But what I want you to do at this point is to pause the video, now that you understand it, now that we explain the problem, I want you to pause the video, do this problem yourself, do not continue watching it, do the problem yourself, and then resume the video, and then compare your work against the work that we are about to do together, okay? I'll give you five seconds to do just that, to pause and unpause, okay? I'm going to get out of your way. Here we go. Now, if you watch the last video, which is why I keep emphasizing that you have to watch part one. You have one more chance. Before, once I do the problem, once, we, once I show you the solution, then there is no fun in it. Then, then you already know how to do it. If you were having some trouble through solving it yourself, then you can stop this video and watch part one first. When you watch part one, make sure you watch all the problems in part one. It has nine problems, and you will see what the trick is here. Here's the trick. Trick is very simple, very straightforward. We are given. 63,000. We are given 63,000. Well, 63,000 can be written as 63 times 1,000. 63 times 1,000. We know, we know 100 has two prime factors. 100 is made up of 5 times 2. 100 is 5 times 2. I lost my pointer. I cannot talk without it. 
100 is equal to 5 times 2, 1,000 is simply 10 times that amount. So this 10 times that amount is just going to be, it's just going to be, well, 10, that's what I mean, not, not 100, because not, I'm, I'm not thinking straight. 10 is equal to 5 times 2. 10 is equal to 5 times 2, therefore 10 squared will simply be 5 squared times 2 squared. 5 squared is 25, 4 squared, 2 squared is 4, 25 times 4 is 100. Similarly, 1,000, 1,000 is simply 10, 10 cubed, which is 5 cubed times 3 cubed. 1,000 is simply 5 cubed times 2 cubed. In other words, the prime factors of 1,000 are exactly the same as what prime factors of 100 are, or what the prime factors of 10 are, 5 and 2. Any multiple of 10, uh, 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 no, I shouldn't say any multiple of 10, I, I, I misspoke. Uh, any multiple, uh, 10 times 10 times 10, they will all have a prime factors of 5 and 2, that's all. We just have to worry about 63. 63, is this divisible by 2? Obviously it's not, it's a, that was a silly question. 63, 63 is an odd number, obviously. We have to divide it by 3. And we get 2 and 1. 2 plus 1 is 3, we can divide by 3 one more time, and we get a 7. That's it, we're done. In other words, 63,000 now we know, 63,000 can be written as 2 cubed, 2 cubed right here, times 3 squared, times 5 cubed, times, times 7, right here. That's it, we are done. That's it, we are done. The work is done. The question is, how many of each color are there? We, we have the answer in front of us. We have the answer in front of us. 2 raised to 3, which means we have to find out which color was worth 2 points. 2 points was red. And how many how many red marbles did we must have removed? We must have removed 3 of them because it's 2 times 2 times 3. So we have 3 red marbles. Let's make a note. 3, three red marbles. Which one was... Which, which marble has the point 3, 3 value? The value of 3 was white. Value of 3 was white, and how many of those we have? We have 3 times 3. 3 times 3 means we must have white times white. A white one, which is 3 times 3. We have 2 whites. 5 was blue. 5 is blue. And there are 3 of them. So we have 3 blue. And finally, we have only 1 green. 1 green. That's it, we're done. That's all. That's how simple it is. Let's do one more, shall we? We're going to do one more. Just for extra practice, we're going to do one more. The problem is going to remain the same. Again, one more time, I want you to pause the video, do it yourself, and then compare your work against the work we do together. And this, as I said, the problem is going to stay the same. Only thing that we're going to change is the number here. Instead of instead of uh, instead of 63,000, let's make it let's make it 147,000. 147,000. Now, this problem that that I, that I just put on the blackboard, 143,000 is the exact same problem that appeared in the 12th edition of the GMAT. It is, it is a problem that appeared in the real GMAT, obviously, because that's where the problems are coming from. It appeared on the, on the 12th edition on page 184. GMAT, 12th edition, page 184, as the problem number 234. Problem number 234. Towards the very end of the problem solving question, it, it, they consider this as a hard question. Again, I'm going to give, give you five seconds to pause and unpause and do the problem yourself, then we'll do it together. Well, nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. Same idea as before. 147,000 can be written as... 143,000 can be written as 1,000 times 147. That's all it is. That's all it is. Can we divide it by 2? The answer is no. We cannot divide it by 2. This number is an odd number. Can we divide it by 3? 1 plus 4 is 5. 5 plus 7 is 12. Oh, it is divisible by 3. Let's divide it by 3. How many 3's in it? 14? 14 has 4 3's. 4 3's are 12. The remaining 2 goes. The joins the 7 becomes 27. How many 3's does 27 have? 27 has 9 3's. That's it. Of course, we can't divide this by 3. 4 plus 9 is 13. We can't divide by 4 or 5 or 6. Let's divide it by 7, obviously. I was being silly. That's it. We're done. That's how simple it is. That's it. We're done. In other words, 
147,000 can be written as, let's take care of these first, 5 cubed times 2, two cubed. I don't like to do that. I prefer to put them in order. It looks better. It looks more elegant. It looks more elegant. So here we have 5 cubed times 2 cubed. So we put down 2 cubed times 3, which, rest, which is 3 raised to 1, times 5 raised to 3, times 7 raised to 2. 7 times 7, don't forget. 7 raised to 2. And now, of course, the answer choice is going to answer is going to change. We have 2, 2 is red. How many do we have? 3. So that stays the same. We have 3 red ones, same as before. 5 is, 5 is, or oh, 2, 2, we have, we have, uh, then we have a 2 cubed times 3. 3 is just 1. 3 was white, and we only have 1. We have only 1 white this time. 5 is to third power right here from 1000 and that's the blue that's same as before that doesn't change that's going to stand and the green before we apparently had one but now we have two seven times two we have two but seven times seven is what I meant we have two greens we have two greens and only one white rest is rest, rest is the same that's all we're done Continue watching the videos for the GRE and the GMAT as I, said, as I said before. Also, if you need help with the vocabulary, if you're interested in improving your vocabulary, there are vocabulary videos on my channel as well. There is, there is a whole bunch of them. There are videos on algebra, there are videos on geometry, if, you, if you're weak in geometry. There are close to 2,000 videos of the channel. Uh, avail yourselves to whatever that is there. Uh, make good use of them, okay? Bye now.